The next logical step for us in solving equilibrium problems will be to actually see how we can use the law of mass action and the corresponding equilibrium expression in order to solve for unknowns. For example, we could say, well, if we know the amounts that we start with, reactants or products, doesn't matter, and we know the value of K, the equilibrium constant, we should be able to actually predict and calculate the concentration of the reactants and products at equilibrium. That's a pretty handy thing for chemists. So this, this screencast walks you through how to do that. And you're going to learn about a technique where you construct something called an ice table. And it's just one of many methods where you can analyze an equilibrium problem. So here's this problem for this screencast. Let's say that we have a reaction between water and carbon monoxide. And that reaction produces hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. It has a K value of 2. And when we, th when we think about this K value of 2, that tells us that we're going to get some significant formation of products. Large K values typically mean that the products are going to be favored. Small K values tell us that the reactants are going to tend to be favored. So here's where the problem gets interesting. Let's say that we only have 8 molecules of water and 6 molecules of carbon monoxide. And I ask you how many molecules of all of those species, so reactants and products, are going to be present at equilibrium. Here's the process that we need to take. First, we need to remember the law of mass action because that's going to allow us to write the equilibrium expression. So the first step you should do in any of these problems, write the equilibrium expression for the process. And you'll see that that's done right here. I've also just plugged in the value of k since it was provided in the problem already. So now I know that 2 equals the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of carbon dioxide over the concentration of water times the concentration of carbon monoxide. Step 1 complete. Let's move on to the next piece. For step 2, we're going to create something called an ice table. Now, that's just a memory device for us to remember to think about the reaction in terms of the initial conditions, how things change, and what the corresponding concentrations would be at equilibrium. So, let me talk you through how we get these numbers, because these tables are already filled in for you, and it can be very confusing as to how and why we have these values in the table. The problem initially stated that we had eight molecules of water, six molecules of carbon monoxide. We didn't have anything else, which means we started out with only reactants. So that's why you'll notice that there's zero hydrogen and zero carbon dioxide. Now the change comes from our thinking about the value of K. Now remember, our value of K was 2. We know from that value that some of the water and the carbon monoxide are going to be converted into products, some of them. How many? Well, we don't quite know. So we're going to take advantage of our knowledge of algebra at this point and say, OK, if we don't know something, we can at least put in a variable for it. And we also have to remember about amounts given by stoichiometry. So in this case, we know that some amount hydrogen is going to be formed. So we just give it a value of plus x. It's, pl it's positive because we're making some hydrogen. The same thing's true for carbon dioxide plus x. Notice that they're produced in the same proportion because in the chemical equation, they're produced in the same proportion in a one-to-one -one ratio. The consequence of making products is always that the reactants will be depleted by some amount. Again, we're going to pay attention to the stoichiometric amounts, so that's why it's minus x and then minus x for both water and carbon monoxide. To find, a, to find out our equilibrium amounts, all we do is we add the two values together in each column. So 8 minus x becomes our expression for the final concentration of water. 6 minus x becomes our concentration for the final amount of carbon, di or carbon monoxide. x becomes our value to represent hydrogen. And x becomes our value to represent carbon dioxide. The next step is we're going to take these equilibrium expressions and plug them into our equilibrium equation from our law of mass action. When we do that, you'll notice that we put x in for hydrogen, x in for CO2, 8 minus x in for water, and 6 minus x in for carbon monoxide. We plug in our k value, and at this point, you have to do some algebra. Solve for x. You'll get two possible solutions in this case, and 4 is one of them, and I believe 22 is the other. It should make sense that x can't be 22. 
it can't be 22 because that would mean that we would have negative numbers of water molecules and carbon monoxide molecules at equilibrium. So when you solve for a quadratic, you get two solutions. You then have to figure out which of those two solutions makes sense. And in this case, if your two solutions for x are 22 and 4, we can eliminate 22 and stick with 4. Now, x is not our final answer for everything. x is merely a way to obtain our final amounts. So the final piece is always plugging in the value of x and going from there. When you do that, you'll notice that at equilibrium, we would have four water molecules, two molecules of carbon monoxide, four, mo four molecules excuse me, of hydrogen gas, and four molecules of carbon dioxide. This screencast should help you with the homework set that's due for class on Monday.